Last week on Remaking The Simpsons Hit and Run. Last week we added vehicles to the project and we transformed our map into a proper island. And these changes made the game really exciting because for the first time you can drive around and actually see every little piece of the map. Well, in this episode I have two big goals. The first one is get every character into the game. I think that alone is going to be a huge upgrade, but also I want to make something visually exciting in this episode, which brings me to goal number two. A day-night cycle, and also dynamic weather patterns. I think if we can make those two things in this episode, we bring ourselves much, much closer to having a finished game. Homer, what are you doing on the blimp? Oh, you're showing today's sponsor, NordVPN. If you're browsing the internet without a VPN, you may as well be writing your passwords on this blimp for all of Springfield to see. A VPN is one of those things you should have, and NordVPN is the number one VPN for a reason. One, it keeps your data secure when you're browsing the internet. Two, it's the fastest VPN out there confirmed by speed tests. And three, it's the easiest VPN to use. You can click anywhere on the map and browse securely from that location. This is really useful because if there's a show or movie not available in your country, you can literally just click the location you want and now you have all the shows available in that country. I use NordVPN because I live in New Zealand where we have access to barely any good shows and I use this feature all the time to get access to shows only available overseas. It works on every major device you need, on your phone, your computer, even your Android TV. And best of all, you can get a huge savings on a two-year plan and one month free with my link nordvpn.com slash rubes. That's spelled R-E-U-B-S. The link is in the description, so get a VPN and get protected today. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Springfield. I do want to address some stuff that the community has been saying because people have been saying in the comments, dude, the, the game looks, it's too much. And people really hate the vignette. If you don't know what the vignette is, by the way, it's that darkness around the corners of the screen. So I'm going to turn it off. Rest in peace vignette. But it does look a lot better, actually. I, I gotta say, I, I think the vignette is a bad choice for this game. And the other thing people were saying is the saturation's too high. Let me see if I can turn that down a little bit. Maybe like there. So basically in this video I said I'm going to do the characters and I'm going to do a day-night cycle. But there's a bit of a side quest, if you will, that I want to do first. Notice how my game is missing street lamps, coins, and other objects. Well, this is because those are dynamic objects and they are a huge pain. So I could go through and hand place all of the coins and all of the street lamps and things. But it would take so long and the locations wouldn't be true to the original game. Basically, we need a better way to do this, and my good friend Sam, the absolute madman, figured out how to do it. Pure 3D Editor is incredible for the fact that you can just straight up go to the very top root of the entire project and export as a pure 3D XML. Here's level one as an XML file. Yep, pure joy. <laughs> <laughs> if you have, if you have an idea like an eye for it. You can literally just scroll through here and find exactly what you're looking for. Everything to do with placements of things around level one, zone one is in here somewhere. Sam then wrote a custom Unreal Engine tool that looks through this massive file and spawns in all of the items for you using only the data in this file. It's honestly incredible. You should just be able to click spawn instanced items. And there you go. It looked through that 190,000 line XML file, found all of the objects, and has placed them. All of the stop signs, all of the hydrants. This is such a time saver. Because the alternative is you would have to go through and place all of these by hand. Which for this size map would take so long. This is crazy. I didn't realize just how much of the level is these dynamic objects. Look at the cemetery level here. I'm going to spawn in all the dynamic objects. I mean, that is crazy. It's like half of the objects in this level. What do you guys think of replacing these older assets with some better, more stylized trees? I know that they don't really match. And I could have someone remake these assets from scratch. I don't really know what the exact fix is here. Because, like, these trees are a little out of place. But they certainly bring this game into the future. And, like... Same with these, I think these definitely need to be remastered. So many funny little tricks that they use, like if you look at these houses, they get smaller and smaller to give the impression of being really far away. Is anyone buying this? It kind of works. 
you can see how empty this level is too. I get the impression this will look a lot better with this fix. And if we spawn the items, definitely an improvement, like for sure. Lots of missing items that are now available in the in the level. All right, now the Tamako fields. Wow, big improvement. And it's added all of these hay bales, but I feel like these were not there because I'm pretty sure you could do this jump. So I don't know why these are here. Okay, well, I was wrong about that. They must be destructible or something. Ah, that's what it is. This one here. Man, that is such an improvement. That's so cool. Next up, this area, which is incredibly empty. You can see there's supposed to be a bunch of trees here. And Mr. Burns Mansion has a bunch of trees out the front, so let's try this out. This zone is called L1Z4. Wow. I can swap these original assets out later, but man, that is an improvement. Oh my days. Totally missed this part of the map, by the way, the backyard of Mr. Burns' house. If we spawn the locator items in, we have the chess pieces now. I love the little easter egg too, there's people inside these chess pieces. Is this a reference to an episode? It seems like there must be an episode where Mr. Burns makes people play, <laughs> play as the chess pieces, but I've never seen it if there is. Hey, Burns has been gone for a while. Let's make a run for it. The side of Mr. Burns' house looks so good. Something went really wrong with this side of the house. I don't even know what it is. There's like a vehicle jump down here. But I don't see how you could access the vehicle jump. I guess you would have to take these gates off. I guess that's what we'll do. And so finally you can drive into the mansion. Ugh. Yeah, definitely need to get this fixed at some point. This is one of those things I don't really remember going into as a kid, but it looks like you can go up the stairs and then come in here. And maybe there's a collector's card up here or something. I would have to check, but do you guys ever remember coming up here in the original game? I never really went in here. And then of course more frustration, I want to delete these doors so that you can drive through here. If I click on these doors here you can see I would have to delete like all of this interior and all this other stuff so I guess I'm just gonna leave the doors there for now. Dude Unreal Engine 5 is literally changing the game okay so let me show you this right. So I wanted to delete these doors but the problem is the doors are also like this room so if I delete it it like gets rid of heaps of stuff out of this room. In Unreal Engine you can actually edit models from in the engine. This is crazy. There's a try select tool. You literally just select the triangles you want and then you can just delete them. So now I don't have to change the model in Blender. I can just delete them here in the engine. This is next level dude. Like, Unreal is so far ahead at this point, it's kind of sad for all the other game engines. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, that's so cool. So now you can drive a vehicle through here. Oh, come on! Really? Hang on. I've watched boy racers in my, in my town. They go up curbs sideways because their cars are too low. Doesn't work in Unreal Engine. Oh, let's go, baby. I'm learning from the boy races. Yeah, okay, I'll fix that stair set. In Unreal Engine, that means going to collision, add box, simplified collision. And then we basically just need to make the box fit around the stairs. Now, if we come up to our stairs. Oh, dude, that is so satisfying. It's so satisfying when stuff just works. Ooh. I actually need to add collision to these chess pieces too. They won't be doing anything just yet. And then of course you can drive through into the power plant. I love the design of these levels. They're very thoughtfully laid out. I have added physics to a lot of these props, like these street poles for example. Uh, but to say it, they need some work would be, uh, would be putting it lightly. Not that the original Simpsons Hit and Run wasn't really jank anyway, like, they had some pretty jank physics. I love doing little varial rolls. So, I was thinking about whether or not to make my own day-night cycle for this game. It turns out there's a marketplace pack that does this for you, and it's really good. 
what I like about it is that you can just set the time of day. Like I can set it to be like five o'clock or midday or whatever. But then the part that made it like I have to buy this is this animate time of day. If you check this box, it basically just does a day night cycle for you. It's really incredible. So I'm going to jump into the game here and um, I've set the time of day to animate very, very quickly. So you can see the sun's going down really fast. And look at the subsurface scattering on the trees. They look so good. And then the sunset is great. Like, watch the sunset, guys. This is incredible. Oh, man, that's so cool. And I love the nighttime skybox as well. I think it looks really, really good. The moon looks great. I love this marketplace pack. Really awesome pack. It's it's totally changed the look of, and feel of the game. All right, so the moon's going down. The sun's coming up. Ah, oh, dude, that looks so good. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome, man. That is... Oh, oh baby. <laughs> I'm losing it, man. I'm losing it right now. This is so cool. So we actually have an issue now, which is that since there's nighttime, we need to add lights to the cars so you can actually see when you're driving around at night. So if you remember on the last video, there was this emissive map and it made the headlights and the brake lights glow. Well, Billy actually sent me this one, which is an RGB version where each light is split into red, green, and blue. What that lets me do is it lets me control the lights using each of those R, G, and B values. And the long story short is that now I can control the headlights through code. And now the lights make sense. When it turns nighttime, you just press L, turn your lights on, and the lights actually have a use now. I also turned on these Aurora Borealises. They're like really extra, but I love them. Do you guys think I should keep them in the game? An Aurora Borealis, at this time of year, at this time of the night, localized entirely within your Hit and Run remake. What a great episode. Can you believe we're three episodes in? Like, this, this slaps. This is so cool. Do people still say slaps? <laughs> I'm getting to the age where like I, I don't know what the kids say anymore. I love the RTX when you come in here and everything's glowing. Oh, dude, it looks so good. I'm sorry. I'm kind of tooting my own horn here, but does it not look so good? This is, this is honestly the worst thing that's happened so far in this project. The project refuses to boot because there's a bug in Unreal Engine 5. So now my project is corrupted and I can't open it up. I haven't backed the project up in so long, like I cannot afford to lose all this work. How am I going to get back into this project? Well, Unreal Engine 5 is open source. So if I can fix the bug that won't let me open the project, I can get back in. I just have to fix the bug myself instead of waiting for Epic Games to do it. And this is the line of code that crashes. So I basically just rewrote Epic Games code here and now this bug is fixed. Hey Epic Games, I fixed this bug, please give me a job. Back in the project now, I've actually been able to open the project up again. That was very scary, I didn't know if I was going to be able to fix the bug. But it's time to do the characters, so let's go. The first character we've added is Bart. Now this is the exact Bart out of the original game. And the exact same animations and everything. I love the double jump animation. I did have to code double jumps because in the original game, your second jump is actually a different animation from your original jump. I didn't realize that. So I had to change the animations a little bit. And this Bart is really interesting. He's been ripped from the original game by Sam. And then Sam cleaned him up and added a lot of extra detail that was just missing in the original game. All right, next up we have Lisa in the game. Looking pretty nice with her upscaled model. And of course, all of the original Lisa animations. They actually look pretty good. You can see her sprint is almost the exact same as Bard's. It might be the exact same animation. But yeah, I think Lisa's animations look really nice. They, they, they still stand up. I don't think they really need remastered. I quite like them. <laughs> and of course, Homer has been referred to back to his original animations. Homer had the silliest run animation. Also, I don't know what this is. This weird trail that started following me. I, I don't know what that is. That's weird. Last of all, we have Marge. Now, I don't know if you guys remember Marge's animations, but look at her run animation. This was the legit Marge run animation. I don't know why they made this her run animation. I guess she's chasing after Maggie or something. I, I don't know. 
Oh, this is a bug I have to fix with the jumping. <laughs> oh god. Okay, the bug with Marge's jumping is fixed. Is this really her jump animation, or have I got some sort of problem with my animation set up? There's no way she jumps like that in the original game. It's almost like her animation plays slower or something. And so I just slowed Marge's jump animation down, and that feels a lot better, but still not perfect. I do need to revisit these animations, but for now I'm happy with them. And of course, we couldn't have Bart in the game without the honor roller, so Billy actually added that. I love the brake lights he added on the back. And of course, the front light can be turned on as well. He's actually modeled a light to the front. I can't remember if there was actually one on the front in the original game. But I love this honor roller, man. It's such a cool model. I definitely need to see if Billy is going to be interested in making Marge's car and Lisa's car, because I think getting all of the main vehicles in the game will be cool. I also added the new phone boxes in. Billy made some new phone boxes for the game. And they actually have some glowing elements on them too, which I quite like. The big thing we really need in the game, and I'm really scared to do this one because I know it's going to be hard, is AI vehicles. I actually don't drive around very much in this project, and it's really fun to just explore and see how everything's getting on. Billboard? Billboard? Are we do Oh my god. I've decided I'm going to go for it. The billboard jump is something that has scared me for many months now. You know, I've just been too scared to even look at it. But here we go, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> Should we drive out to New Zealand? Oh, New Zealand! Hell yeah. Ugh, I forgot to upscale the Quickie Mart sign. Look how gross that looks, dude. Ugh. That Quickie Mart sign hasn't had a bath in weeks. Alright, let's get the new Quickie Mart in there. <laughs> Even the upscaled one's pretty bad. Hey, it's, it's better. It's an improvement. The other incredible thing about this plugin that handles the sky for me is it also has a weather system. And I might set it to be raining, for example. And look how easy that was. Like, that was so easy to set up. And the rain looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. It also supports snow. This is a cool pack. Like, the fact that it just does this for you out of the box. And this looks really good. There's also this option to use random weather variations. So I'm going to test this out by making the system change the weather once every 5 to 10 seconds. Let's see if it works. Oh, there we go. Wow. This is cool, man. I don't think it's going to snow because I've set the pack to summer right now. So it'll only do uh, summer type weather. So rain is basically the worst the weather will go. A lot of new assets have been given to the game by Billy and Sam. They've been working really hard. So we have new street lamps in the game. We have a new stop sign model. We have a new fire hydrant model. And I just got the new traffic light models in. So finally we can upgrade these as well. I've put one of the traffic lights into the level here. And as you can see, a really big upgrade. I mean, <laughs> just look at the textures. So much nicer. And Billy even provided me with a red, green, blue mask, which means that I can individually turn some of these lights on or off if I want to as well. Alright, so I've selected every traffic signal and I should actually be able to just swap them all out in one big go. So if I look around the map, yep, they have all been swapped out with the new model. I love it! Alright, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more of these. And of course, go and pick up NordVPN if you want to help support me. Also, the Patreon link is in the description if you want to get early access to videos. And yeah, see you later.